Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 37. Today is Mount Tops of the Giants. If this is the first time you've watched any of these videos, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. And if you have any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comment so everybody can look over more tips. But from the Zamora Ruins Grace, we are heading uh, southeast-ish down, down the road. There's an item on this wall, and then we're going to double back into the ruins. Uh, to get the uh, the meat and potatoes of these items, but we're also just going to completely ignore these Zamor warrior guys. Not worth fighting whatsoever. Far more trouble than, uh, I mean, they don't drop anything guaranteed, and they're also, like, pretty tough for, like, normal enemies just walking about. So there we picked up Zamor Ice Storm, and now we're heading down these stairs to get a, I think it's a Bell Bearer. You are exactly correct. It is a bell bearing. Smithing stone bell bearing. Oh shit, nice. That's actually a good one. Yeah, definitely go and pick that one up for certain. Like, uh, that's actually, like, necessary that you pick that one up. <laughs> yeah. Horror I, I actually think up. that's the one that gives you, uh... Is it plus 18 weapons? Something like that. Must, it must be like 6 and... Or like, 5 and 6, right? Yeah, I think so. So we headed up those cliffs right to the end, there's a golden ring 10, and we dropped back down and we're at the map fragment and then the grace again. So now we're going to loop all the way down and head back down this road again, just ignoring the guys with the swords, because why Why would you fight them? There's absolutely no reason to. Like you said, they don't drop anything. They can't drop their armor, they can't drop their weapon. So they're really just... A freezing pain in the ass at this stage in the game. Just, just run past them and pick shit up. There is no need to waste your time. Exactly. Now there was a scarab in the tree, and then that dropped a somber smith and stone seven. So obviously get that, even though we must have about forty somber smith and stone sevens at this point. And now we're just heading along the kind of beaten path up the cliff uh, for just some more progress. There's kind of. It's as the game goes on, it seems like the areas get less and less populated with items, to be honest. Um, so now we're at this kind of cliff edge, we're going to just like drop off here and we're going to head into these ruins. Now what you saw there was a bunch of fire monks, and uh, they can drop the fire, the monks, well actually I don't think those are, are those the fire monks? Well, those might be the, the <laughs> other guys, the thorn those sorcerers. Those are the thorn sorcerers, yeah. Yeah, so the Thorn Sorcerers can drop Staff of the Guilty, uh, but only the ones that are on fire, apparently. If somebody can confirm or deny that, then that'd be cool. And they can also drop Smoldering Butterflies. But now we're in this catacombs, and it is an another Imp Catacomb. Uh, again, this one's uh, pretty involved, from what I remember. I really don't actually remember this one, to be perfectly honest the, with you. the Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs. I want to say the boss is a tree spirit. Oh, but beyond that, I don't really remember. Uh, I don't really remember much about this one. This is kind of a treat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the imps can drop the fort hatchet, the fort greatsword, the imp head cat, the imp head fanged, the imp head long tongue, the imp head wolf, as well as like smolder butterflies, glintstone fireflies, fog blooms, mushrooms, and smithing stones. So yeah, that's just the intro part to this. Once you come down this lift, uh, it starts getting into like the actual area. Uh, now, something that the guidebook fucked up on, right? After I'd done my first full test of the guide, I was like, right, what am I missing? I'm missing the fire monk's ashes. Why, why is that? I never picked it up. Turns out this whole underground section under the lift just isn't in the guidebook at all. <laughs> It's interesting that they missed this. This feels yeah. like the sort of thing that the guidebook was specifically made for. <laughs> and yet... It's, yeah, it, it, it does feel like that, yeah. Like, in the map, I looked on the map and it's just like... The, so it's mapped out every single one of these little dungeons and it's just not there. Huh. As you can see, though, um, in this dungeon in particular, you are starting to get the... A tree burial watchdogs as just normal enemies as well as yeah. the traps now spew frostbite at you so coming down here with margaret's or Moog shack already would probably be a decent idea so you don't have to go menuing while there's enemies bothering you um, yeah as you lowering can see. the trap and heading past it um i believe at the end of here there's another watchdog 
I, I think so. I, I don't think we fight it though. I think we just uh, grab the item and run away. Because at the end of this area here, after grabbing the Ghost Glove War 7, uh, in this chest should just be the Fire Monk's Ashes. Yeah. Voila. And we are not fighting that thing. We can just roll right around it and just get the fuck out of here. Because that's all there is. So now heading all the way back to the lift and uh, straight back up again. You're welcome for the sped up footage, by the way. Say thanks in chat. Actually, just say thanks for all the fucking effort I've put into this, by the way. Literally, like, two years to make this fucking thing. Not even worth it, by the way. But, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. YouTube, man. <laughs> oh, and say thanks to Twin Profanity here as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Admire and appreciate. <laughs> yeah, you sit down, imp. Prick. So, now, we are heading down another lift. To go even further down. I mean, this this fucking catacombs feels like you're travelling to the centre of the earth. I guess we're already really high up, so I kind of go into sea level. <laughs> <laughs> I've even thought about that. So I think this is another catacomb that does that sort of two-layer nonsense, where it looks like you are going through the catacomb and then you go through it again, but actually it's an, an almost identical second layer. Um, but this is pretty straightforward, you just keep pressing forward and ultimately it's... You can't really get lost in this one, at least from memory I don't think so. So obviously do your best to avoid all these jars, the better thing to do is to get out the bow or like a ranged attack and then bait one of the jars uh, one at a time. Uh, I think I do that on the second pass, uh, on the second layer. Because, uh, yeah, so this definitely is a layered one, because in the second layer there's a big jar in this room, rather than the little one. Oh, that's right, yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> it's taken me this long. Yeah, because of this... Yeah, I know, I know what's going on, I know what the score is. Yeah, in the second <laughs> layer there's the giant land squirt, yeah. Yeah. But like I said, it's, it's pretty easy. Avoid that one trap, by the way. I don't know how I missed that. I was clearly not paying the slightest bit of attention. But the good thing is we've got really lines going on. Out of this dungeon. Is... <laughs> Wait, that again? Sorry. I said really wanting out of this dungeon. That's what was going on. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. I'm just like, oh, God, the area is so big. So you get a ritual pot for that. So that is actually kind of worth it. And there's a Grave Glove Wart 7 as well. Now, this is where we get to the next layer. Uh, when you drop down this little hole here, this looks like you're back to the start of layer 1, but actually you're at the start of layer 2. See, room looks very similar. And you're like, I swear I, I killed these guys. But you need to remember that, you know, this lift actually doesn't lead up to the start of the catacombs. It actually leads to a different bit of layer 2 that looks like the, you're travelling back to the start of the catacombs. Just pay close attention to the footage and you won't have any trouble. So of course we're not fighting the cat guy. Now, what I can, what I will say is those watchdogs though apparently can drop the watchdog's greatsword. Uh, yeah, they can, actually. Um... I don't think the Watch Dogs or Eight Swords really up to that much. Oh, hello. Um, but, uh, yeah, they can drop it. It behaves a lot like the uh, the other Great Sword that we picked up earlier in the game in Kaled, except uh, this one's a little bit shorter, and that's really the only distinction. Yeah, here we go. So I'm just using the bow to bait out uh, one of these pots at a time, because this is a bit of a bastard of a room, if we're being honest. Um, what, multiple pots plus blade trap? So, oh, I need to run away from the pot. Oh, I immediately die to the giant blade trap. So, yeah, I sped this bit up, because it's clearly... I think you can get the point here, and you don't need to watch me kill all these pots. But otherwise, avoid the trap. And uh, kill the big jar in this room on the second layer, which looks like the room the first layer that had the little jar. <laughs> For a Grave Glove War 8, no less. I think that's a decent pickup. If you were looking to upgrade another couple of uh, 
normal type spirit ashes. It's worth picking up. So there's the giant land squirt, which signifies that you're on the second layer. Now this time I used the trap to my advantage, and I uh, activated it, and then... <laughs> that's funny, he just used a fucking iron jar aromatic. Yeah. Didn't save him though, because we're not a rune bear. No. <laughs> uh, and now this should take us back to um, layer 1, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. That seems right. Yeah, I think. Although... Oh, no, no, no. To get back to layer 1, uh, it, actually, it actually takes you back to the start of layer 2. To get back to layer 1, you have to go under this lift. Because down there is layer 1. Yeah. And this is how you open up the boss door. So you have to go under the lift. This unlocks the short... Well, I say the shortcut. This just unlocks the boss for you. And now you can drop back down here to layer 1 and then go back up that lift and that will take you back to the boss. So, like I said, this one is actually fairly straightforward. Yeah, it's more linear than the other looping dungeons. It's a lot easier to follow this one. Now, interestingly enough, I didn't check what was under that lift, but there must have been nothing. I presume so. I don't think we missed anything. So I'm just heading back to the Grace to heal up and then I'll head back to the boss. I don't know why I didn't speed up this entire run back to the Grace. I think because it's maybe because it's so far to like so far back to get to the Grace that uh, speeding up might make you kind of lose track of what I was doing. So I think that's why I didn't speed up. Uh, Once yeah, but... again, say thank you, Mr. Editing Man. Yeah, well, it's sped up now, so... <laughs> there we go, now we're at the boss. I have fucking no idea what this boss is. But we're going to do the usual of uh, taking our Physic Flask, we're going to use a little Golden Vow, and then we're going to... Cast Flame Cleanse Me, because I'm really smart. There we go, Flame Cleanse yeah. Me Strength. <laughs> And I'm casting Blood Flame Blade, so there must be something important going on. It is, in fact, another ulcerated tree spirit. Epic. Was this the fucking eighth one or something? Jesus Christ. Something like, but at least this one doesn't deal Scarlet Rot. <laughs> so, you know, small mercies. Yeah, at least. Now, as you can see, that was three lines claws to stagger, and then we're just, like... <laughs> my God, the fuck. Maybe it was just rattling that thing's head. So, yeah, that one is clearly quite a lot weaker than the other ones proportionally. That was interesting. But, yeah, lines claw plus blood flame blade seems to put in the work. And if you have the mimic tier... Uh, who's also using the Great Stars, then you shouldn't have much of an issue. I really don't think that it's worthwhile going into super in-depth about Ulcerated Tree Spirits at this point, because you, if you are at this point in the game, you have fought them many, many times. So, those are the Flame, uh, the Thorn Sorcerers, after all. So we're picking up uh, Arteria Leaf and Briars of Punishment. Uh, and now, that guy there, that is a Flame, a flame Prelate, so they can drop the prelate helm, the armor. Uh, they can drop an altered version of the armor as well, apparently. Um, the the frame prelate, fire prelate gauntlets, fire prelate greaves, and they can also drop the thorned whip or the prelate's infernal crozier. I think that one there is the only one that can drop the whip, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it drops from those that wield it. There's a fire prelate at the south end of the bridge leading to the rest of the mountain tops of the giants. Yep, that would appear to be the only one that drops the whip, yes. So heading yeah. along this stone bridge, we're kind of uh, getting behind things because we're just aware that we're being shot at from this big golem. It's not too big a deal, but uh, yeah, you just want to position yourself in a certain way that you're 
not just directly lined up with it at every at any given moment. But as these things have glass ankles, uh, Lion's Claw is particularly good at uh, dealing with them. And there we go, nice and dead. Now, the Golems, as we said before, uh, they can drop the Golems Halberd, the Golems Great Bow, uh, Great Arrows, Golems Great Arrows, Golems Magic Arrows, but only that one in Caled, or sorry, the one in Dragon Barrow that we went to, that's the only one that drops the Golem Magic Arrows. So you're never ever getting them, right? Just the Golems Magic Arrows, for all intents and purposes, do not exist to you in this game. Uh, so that's Somber Smith and Stone 8 we got from that. We picked up a soft cotton. And uh, now we are kind of nearing the... Because this is still, by the way, the introductory portion to Mountain Tops of the Giants. Right? We're still not really at Mountain Tops of the Giants yet, to be honest. Now, here we've got Millicent. So I think we need to exhaust Millicent's dialogue here in order to progress our quest. Yep, as with every NPC and every encounter, make sure to completely exhaust that dialogue. You will know you have when you rest again at the Grace and she disappears. Yes, she has now yes. progressed. Um, and the next time we'll encounter Millicent will be in the Halig Tree, I believe. So you should have noticed there that we put on Wild Strikes on our um, Great Stars. That's because we're about to do a an, an NPC fight. So it's the last invasion for the um, Recusance? The Volcano yeah. Manor Quest. Yeah, the Volcano Manor Quest. This will be Juno Hoslo. Um, so we follow the path down towards the golem that's wandering back and forth. Here's a bunch of demi-humans. Ignore them. They're a non-issue. Um, took a right at the wandering golem, and if you continue hugging the uh, right wall of the cave, you'll get to a golden seed, or canyon, I suppose, rather than cave. Yeah, I get it. Um, and again, continue hugging it. There's one prone on the ground there. He will get up as you get near him, like so. And way over here, there's one of those statues you have to break. And now, in theory, you could use the technique where you wedge yourself sort of into it, under it, and then save quit to get it to break the uh, the statue open and get the juicy juicy rewards on the inside. But what we're <laughs> going to do is what the game anticipates you doing, which is getting irritated because the golem's fucking walking away from us. He's being very non-committal about smashing us into <laughs> dust. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Bait the golem into breaking the statue. Pick up the juicy center within, and then we're good to go. That's, uh, what is that, the three soft, Smith and Stone 7s? The soft and chewy Smith and Stone 7, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can head up this hill here and then this leads us to the the start of the frozen lake. Now there's actually another way of getting here. Uh, at least I think this is the start of the frozen lake. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it is. It is. Um, but that cliff to the right of us just now, there's a whole section up there that we have to do first before tackling the frozen lake. So we're going to go and do that. And to do that you have to go all the other fucking way down here. Um, I think you should be able to follow us just running down a canyon. You can thank us again. If you've already thanked us, leave another comment thanking us. But here is Juno Hoslow's uh, summon sign. We're going to invade his world, and we're just going to put on Blood Flame Blade and Wild Strikes. And, uh, you know, it... so you get Hoslow's oath, by the way, so it's kind of, you know, it's obviously worthwhile doing this for that. But now that is uh, Mr. Juno Hoslow fucking dead. Thank you, Wild Strikes. I think this is the one instance where Wild Strikes really, really pays off because Juno Hoslow is a pain in the ass to fight. They oh, have another... a pair of Hoslows, Petal Whips, and uh, those have really good range. They inflict bleed. We were rewarded with one, so if you're interested in using a whip, that's the one to use. Um, and it also has Bloodhound Step, so it's a pain in the ass to get a hold of the slippery bastard, and Wild Strikes completely eliminates that problem. Uh, so there is one other NPC that is specifically, it's so good that you have Wild Strikes to beat him, and that's Bernal. He is, in my opinion, the hardest NPC to fight in the game by a fucking huge margin, and Wild Strikes just completely takes that away. 
But anyway, uh, we are uh, we went up that spirit spring and then we came to the merchant and just bought his cookbook. Doesn't really sell a whole lot else that's uh, of particular note. Again, Irritatingly, um, this merchant is pretty much directly above the grace we were at, where Millicent was, but there is yeah. no path from the grace directly to the merchant, so if you want to speak to that merchant for whatever reason, you have to come all the way around. Or, you can just kill the idiot, take his bell bearing, and then he lives at the round table hold inside the Twin Maiden Husks. Yeah, I was going to say something that we mentioned quite early in the guide, but should probably reiterate a few more times. Oh, okay, actually, very quickly. Now we're at these ruins, there's this jellyfish just hanging about. Now what you're going to do is summon the jellyfish. Uh, for some reason, I hit the mimic tier. Didn't mean to do that, because it kind of looks a bit jellyfishy, if you ask me, right? So you're, you're going to put the jellyfish ashes on, and then summon the jellyfish here, and then that completes this quest, or whatever. Apparently, these jellyfish are banging, or something like that. Um, the sisters... I think they're banging, actually. It literally says they're sisters. Aye, they're like sisters, like, hey sister, you know? But anyway, you get the fancy spin gesture, and then, um... And then you get... I don't even know how to respond like... to that. <laughs> <laughs> they're like the souls of children. You could even find the graves at the base of the cliff near here. I think I saw that, actually. Interesting. Um... So, so yeah, you knew all along. So your weird fanfic just got even weirder. <laughs> Shut up! Right. Um, point is, right, some of the jellyfish, you do that. Now, back to the merchant thing. If you kill any merchant in the game, they'll drop their bell baron, and you can take that bell baron to Enya, which is the... En but sorry, not Enya, the twin maiden husks, rather. Uh, and then she'll... With that bell baron, she'll sell the stuff that the merchant was selling. So Here now we're going to Corrin. Yes. Uh, this is the continuation for their quest. Um, matter of fact, this is pretty much the end point of their quest. Uh, there's um, one more part. There's one more part. Yeah, Corrin's there, upset because Goldmask is T-posing on him and telling him that his religion's a lie. Um, and do we have to confirm this even further for them? Confirm what for them? That Corrin's religious is, uh, religion is a lie, and everything he's been taught to believe is wrong. Well, wait, I mean, Marika is Radigan or some shit, right? Uh, exactly. So we, so we picked up a Somber Smith and Stone 9, we picked up a Golden Rune 10. Just make sure, again, you exhaust the dialogue of uh, both Corrin and Goldmask. And then that means that they will then show up in Lindell when we head back there for the last part of the game. So, yeah, we're just, uh, I think we grabbed a Rune Arc off that branch. I wasn't paying super close attention. Now, ignore this boss for just now. Uh, we're going to head back here just in a minute, but we're going to first grab the grace, because actually when you think about it, we're quite far away from the last grace. So we're just going to grab that grace there, get better equipped for fighting the air tree avatar. Um, I almost fucked that jump up. <laughs> Instead of jumping <laughs> off the edge, just ran off the edge. But, um, but yeah, uh, this next Air Tree Avatar boss, uh, the gimmick for this one, because they were really running out of ideas, is this one splits into two. So we're going to make sure we equip uh, Flame and Strike. And um, you literally just need Flame and Strike and nothing else, uh, as we're about to demonstrate. I don't think we put anything else on. Because I just don't think, I just didn't think I could be arsed changing anything else about the equipment, but you was Oh no, apparently we do. Never mind. Put the fire scorpion charm on. Okay, that's just one other thing. So we don't do anything to the physic flask or anything. We just put on flame and strike, put on the fire scorpion charm, and then just go to town. Now, eventually this thing will split into two, but they share a health bar, so you can just keep wailing on one. Hope the mimic tier... God, the mimic tier's doing decent damage, actually. Holy shit. But yeah, uh, f honestly, I mean, Flame and Strike... Oh, Jesus Christ, it wasn't even able to split. Yeah. Like, it did just split there at the end, but as they... Sh wow. Yeah, Flame and Strike, uh, good. Confirmed. Hell yeah. <laughs> and we get the Cerulean Crystal Tier and the Crimson Crystal Tier, I think that was. 
But yeah, now we've got that grace. One half I... of that upper upper portion done. So with Juno Hosler dead, we're coming back to get the reward for that and completing the Volcano Mana quest. Yes, so we got the Taker's cameo, I think that was called. Very, very good talisman. You get health back whenever you kill an enemy. So then we will be teleported to Rykard. Now this is a Remembrance boss, and initially it looks like you're meant to pick up the weapon, very akin to the Storm Ruler in uh, Dark Souls 3, or more accurately Demon Souls. And then you might fight the boss with the Storm Ruler, but actually... And this blew my mind. You can just warp out the boss room and go and upgrade the fucking Storm Ruler. It upgrades via Somber Stones. And we have so many, we can just get it to plus nine. Because fuck it, right? They're coming out of arse. And then we can head back into the boss room. <laughs> and at this point, Rykard is such a fucking joke. But there's an extra element to this as well, where actually you want to power stance the a lance and... The uh, the storm the storm ruler. Uh, specifically, you want the storm ruler in your left hand, or do I switch them? No, you need the uh, storm ruler in the off hand. That's correct. Okay, so yeah, storm ruler in the left hand, uh, the lance in the right hand, and basically what this does is you will get the lance move set for power stance on your L1, and the crouching L1 attack comes out so fast that it's it's just broken. It's just insanely broken, as you will see. <laughs> Not only that, you can summon our fully upgraded Mimic tier for this boss. So, yeah, it really is, to be fair, as much as you, as we were told in a comment that you can do this boss after Lindell rather than just now, it's not really that big a difference in time frame. But, yeah, um, doing it now, just it's such a fucking piss take. So yeah, on, the crouch head. poke technique that you're about to see. Not that. This. Yes. Um, that attack, by the way, is borderline impossible to dodge. So if it hits you, don't worry about it. This, this you could have dodged. Don't get hit <laughs> so by this. Uh, <laughs> well, you can, what viewer at home. But, um, yeah, the, the crouch poke just turns you into a fucking anti-aircraft gun. Um... You just you get the the projectiles so fast and so frequently that it, he just can't do anything. You'll kill so him so quickly that he's not a threat. For context, if you are wielding the storm ruler in your right hand, you get a a, a very cool cinematic move set with the storm ruler. I think I might show it for its second half, but basically it has all these attacks that you can like charge up and it fires out like a big blade of wind that comes out the that comes out the storm ruler um but what this does is it sort of combine like it's a very slow move set that you need to charge the attacks up to use but when you do it this way it's you still get the um the 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 uh the wind blade aspect to the storm ruler there see th there we go yeah i've I done this to kind of show you um this is what the move set would normally be like but when you combine it with the lance it's so, so fast that the second form of Rykard just is not an issue whatsoever. And for that, we get Rykard's Great Rune and um, his Remembrance. Now, I think I do another footage of this just to show you what it's like with the Storm Ruler normally. Maybe. Hopefully, I did do that, actually, because I think it is important to just show Rykard's uh, second phase a little bit more. Um... Yeah, so Rykard's second phase, the reason you'd want to show that a bit more is because he sort of goes into like a, what I'll describe as a hell mode. He yeah. lets out a big roar, the sky turns red, it starts raining burning skulls that explode, it's very metal. Um, This, borderline impossible to dodge, don't yeah. worry if that hits you, just have enough health and armor to tank it. Yo, I dodged at that time. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's the um, mimic tier doing, like, fucking putting in bits. Absolutely insane damage. Um, upgrading the Storm Roller is worth it for a few reasons, I think. So, number one, if you go into New Game Plus, you'll be doing more reasonable damage to Rykard when you fight him. Number two, the Storm Roller itself just isn't a bad weapon. 
It does very respectable stance damage. Um, it's long. It has no requirements, so literally everyone can wield it. Um, it's all around just pretty good. The one thing I will say about it is the Ash of War is kind of useless outside of Raycard's arena. Yeah. But um, despite the animation giving you almost no hyper armor, if you can get it to land, the stance damage the R2, the L2 does, sorry, is fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing I will say is that actually Rykard can be quite difficult um, if you're not prepared just because of the amount of damage you can like pump out in that like kind of lava flow that just deals tick damage over time. Uh, but I guess really, I suppose we didn't show the hell mode for Rykard, right? I suppose we didn't. But I think what to take away here is that an unupgraded lance and a very easy to upgrade spectral lance can just completely fucking melt them if you're at the right por portion of the game. So if you're having trouble with Rikard, just wait until about this time and then go do them. And we get the eye circle in his boss room. But now, once we've beaten Rikard, we need to go back to Tanith and she ain't happy about it. Well, she kind so of is happy about it. That was the whole point of the mana. Was that the strong take what they want. So we just went and killed her husband. Because we wanted him dead. And she's like, uh, 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 I mean, I can't be I that. I guess that's it. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to be a hypocrite. Not to the guests. But um, So then we spoke to Patches. So we spoke to Tanith first, exhausted her dialogue. She's like, well, I guess we're fucking need to clear out here now. Thanks, bro. As she says through gritted teeth. Um, so we get the my thanks gesture at the that spirit at the end of the hall. Um, we did mention that in the Volcano Manor episode. We speak to Bernal. And we spoke to Patches. And now I think we just uh, rest. And then they should have disappeared. Yeah, I believe so. So it was mentioned in a comment quite rightly that you can actually complete the last contract after... Oh, and here's Raya abandoned alone. Thanks, Tony. Cool. Um, Literally free real estate and you're fucking complaining to me. She has a fucking mansion to herself and the giant snake god at the, bo at the bottom of it is now dead and you're complaining. Insane. I am. I am complaining. <sighs> Actual entitled generation, monster. man. <laughs> entitled generation. With the same generation. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And then she's gone. And you don't get the letter from her because you fucked it up. Head into the no. Castellan's Hall. This is yes. where we fought um, Elmer of the Briar in that part of the guide. And here's Patches fucked up and dying. He gives you the densest castanet, which you can give to Tanith when we eventually find where she ended up. Then he, I guess, pretends to be dead. Yeah, I, this part of the quest is quite clearly unfinished and or bugged because the dancers' castanets do nothing, literally. That's it, Epic. there you go. <laughs> but you do, as far as I'm aware, you do need to get the castanets off patches to get him to move back to Murkwater Cave. But uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, you come here, so. speak to her, and um, then you kill her. Well, you attempt to kill her, and then you get kind of a unique invasion, I guess. Yeah, this guy's Crucible Knight. But we do have Prayerful Strike, and thus these Crucible Knights can actually... They, they, they can't beat us. <laughs> so the, the technique <laughs> is to literally just press L2 until this thing dies. You may notice that uh, we have taken... Uh, no, well, we've taken a little bit of damage, but for... Two thirds of this thing's health. We took zero damage thanks to Prayerful Strike. Although I'm kind of showing my ass now, but it's besides the point. <laughs> and there we go. Nice and dead. There we go. And we get aspects of the Crucible Breath for that. I believe that's the last aspect of the Crucible incantation. And we get uh, Tanith set as well, the Consort set. Um, and we head back to Murkwater Cave now, uh, because Patches has returned here, as you quite rightly said a moment ago. I will mention, though, since I believe we have all of the 
um, Crucible incantations until the DLC comes out. Um, the Crucible Knight armors, both the axe and tree sets, boost the power of the Crucible incantations when won. So, uh, similar to the the first patches encounter, you go into his uh, you go into his chest, and he's like, "Take a man's personal belongings, will ya?" And uh, then you, he's inexplicably doesn't recognise us. Um, oh, he does now. Okay, there we go. So you need you After need to fight him. Stabbed him in the liver. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now doing this gets us. I think. I think it gets us another gesture. I think it does. We get patches crouch for this, and now he will be back to being a vendor. Yippee! And stays here permanently. And you know what that means, boys and girls. You can go put his soul in the twin maiden husks and murder him right now. <laughs> We, d we don't, but yes, you could indeed kill him, get his bell burn, and give him his twin maiden husks, like most, if not all, vendors in the game. Not only that, you would also get the leather armor set, and that's the only way to get it. Yes, and that's a, true. I think a plus seven spear? Yeah, something like that. So yeah. technically, if you're able to kill him right at the start of the game, you do get like a little bit of a boost because of the spear. Um, but yeah, that is it for patches. Every that's everything, pretty much. Uh, so now we are heading back to the, um, I don't think this is the isolated one, but it's the, uh, it's the Divine Tower, Divine of, Tower of West Skirts. Altus. And then that gets us, um, Rikard's Rune. Which, uh, Rikard's Rune gives you a similar effect to the Taker's Cameo, to the Blasphemous Blade, which, by the way, I want to talk about. Um, in that it gives you health back when you kill enemies. Um, it's very, very strong. But the Blasphemous Blade, I would argue, is one of the singular strongest weapons in the game. You get it from Rikard's Remembrance. Um, it deals fire damage. It has Taker's Flames, which heals you for an extraordinary amount of HP when used. Um, it heals you based on the number of enemies it hits. Down here is a unlabeled Tibia Mariner boss. And I believe this one drops a Death Root. Oh, no. Yes. No, 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 no. This one drops the Health no. and Steeple. <laughs> well, uh, so what I was actually going to say is the reason why we took such a, a tight, um, you'd see that we we dropped down off the cliff to this particular Tibia Manor, but we didn't run down the road, and that's because this Tibia Manor is actually responsible for summoning a bunch of giant fucking skeletons on the road that deal a huge amount of damage to you. So we just came to this cliff edge and just made the, the, the quickest possible route to this Tibia Manor just to kill it as quickly as possible, and... Um, and get the the skeletons out of the way. Now, of course, we equipped Sacred Blade because the Tibia Mariners are weak to Sacred Blade, and we also got a Death Root and Health and Steeple, so you were... Right on all counts. Two... Uh, three quarters points for that. All right, I'll, I'll take it. 75% still a first. Um... <laughs> In some universities, uh, maybe some of the you know cheaper ones, but anyway. So now we are gonna head back down the road, and when we warped back to that grace, we then put on the sacred scorpion charm because we're gonna fight a death bird, and obviously the the tibia mariners are weak to holy damage. But as are death birds, as we've said multiple times, this is why sacred blade is so good, and this is why stacking sacred blade plus the sacred scorpion charm uh, really does a lot to kill these death 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 birds slash death right birds. So we get to this I death will also board, say, Oh, go on. This one is kind of unique in that you can't avoid it by it being daytime. It will invade you here no matter what. Good point. I never even noticed that. Yeah. So you don't need to make it mm. nighttime. You can just come here whenever and it will show up for some fucking reason. Um, almost certainly that wasn't intentional, if you ask me, and it just, just went unnoticed. But yes, uh, getting a solid sacred blade onto this thing's head will indeed be uh, good for you. And having the... I mean, uh, even if you tier... don't land it squarely, it's still doing decent damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, having the Mimic tier certainly helps. Get a little bit of distraction, he can get in some extra damage. My fucking hell, that's good damage for the Mimic tier. Go him. Oh my god, he is, he is like fucking... pre-patch oh my... Mimic tier damage. <laughs> what the fuck? He actually 
<laughs> he done most of the damage to that thing. But that's pretty much the strategy for the Death Right Birds. Just hit it with Sacred Blade. You do so much damage you don't need to care anymore. And you get the Death Ritual Spear for your troubles. Um, this area loading you down with good gear, actually. Um, the Death Ritual Spear has Spear Caller Ritual as its Ash of War. That's the attack the Death Right Birds can do to you where they fly up and away, open the wings, and a bunch of spears hit the floor. You can effectively do that now. It's very strong skills of intelligence. Um, and Health and Steeple is effectively the Onyx Blade from Dark Souls 3. It has this big uh, uh, ghost flame flare um, attack on its actual war. Very good. Um, nice to pair with the uh, Death's Poker that we got from the Death Right Bird in Kaled if you wanted to power stance them on an intelligence build. It's, it's really strong. So now we are, I think, I think we, oh, okay, I, I thought we just passed a glove warp. We did not. Um, but yes, now we are up behind Castle Sol, which is the castle that we're at. Very similar um, to Red Main Castle, actually. But up behind it, there's some, some runes, and then there's a smith and stone right at the end of this little kind of run area, and then we can head into the castle. Where there's two really annoying fucking lines to fight. Ugh. Right at the start as well. And one exceptionally lethal banished knight. Yes, we'll get to that when we get to it. It's quite, it's quite funny, actually. It's, it's like the banished knight version of that uh, Dragon Barrel Golem. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> So we're putting Lion's Claw back on because, ironically, Lion's... Well, maybe not ironically, probably coincidentally, Lion's Claw is very good at fighting these lions, actually. Um, as we actually discovered when fighting them here, we tried a bunch of things and then it just turns out, oh, actually, Lion's Claw is just <laughs> the best thing to fight them. Uh, just because you can just hit through their attacks and you just don't really give a fuck. So summon the Mimic and go to town. That's pretty much it. Yeah, the, these Lion Guardians, as you saw, have this Frost Breath attack. Um, that hits really hard. So try your best to not get caught in that because it deals continuous damage while you're standing in the cloud. So avoid that if you can. Um, if you wanted a slightly easier time getting your Mimic Summon off without getting harassed, there is a wooden structure over at the far end of this arena behind where we are now. Or, I suppose, on our left now. Um, if you stand underneath there, you can summon the Mimic Scott free and get away with it completely. Did the Mimic kill the other one for you? Uh, yes, so we got a Somber Smith and Stone 9 for, uh, 7 rather, for killing the one that we killed. Uh, I don't know if the other one dropped a Somber Smith and Stone 7, but it's whatever. Um, so yeah, the Mimic was able to just kill it outright, which is fucking wild by the way. Um, so... As you can see, Mimic plus Lion Claw, good. Um, but yeah, Lion Claw is very good against those lines because you're able to hit through their really annoying attacks. It's got pretty decent tracking and it was two Lion's Claw to stagger the fucking thing. Uh, and as we've said before, staggering things, very, very good because if they're staggered, they ain't hitting you. They ain't moving. So yeah. Um, but also I had the Fire Scorpion Charm still equipped. So it was actually doing a bit more damage than it should have been. So just remember, to, you just remember to take the uh, sorry, not the fire scorpion charm. I think the sacred scorpion charm. Uh, you know, for fighting the death right bird. So just remember to take that off before you fight the two lines. Yeah. Speaking of taking talismans off, honestly, for mountain tops at this point, you could probably get away with losing the uh, Radigan Saw Seal. You'd maybe be better off with the additional damage resistance than you would the extra stats. Uh, it is quite possible, um, certainly when it comes to Snowfield, we do eventually take it off and you do notice quite a significant difference in the amount of damage that you end up taking. So it's, it's, it is worthwhile probably replacing it for like the the um, the Crimson Amber Medallion perhaps or even just the, the, Dragon, the Dragon Crest Shield. Eventually we do start, we do use the, um, the Dragon Crest Tower Shield which when you couple that with taking off the sore seal, you actually do notice a significant reduction in the amount of damage that you take, so that's pretty cool. Now, you get shot off a bunch of ballista in this area, so we want to have our guard up, we want to 
bait out the baluster shots and then move. Um, because, yeah, they can actually, it can pack, it can stack up a lot of damage. So just be, be wary when it comes to the baluster shots. Nothing you shouldn't be able to handle by this point in the game anyway. And here is a, another painting, which is actually pretty close by, so we can get that. We probably get it at the end of this episode, I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, it is in this half of the mountaintop, so there is a good uh, good chance we do get that in this part. But we're about to jump up on this tent over here, and over this wall. And it took me forever to realize how to get this item. And I wish I'd realized sooner, because that is the second Stormhawk Axe you can get in yes. the game without killing Nephili, which is really nice. Um, as I said in the uh, Landell part, you can get two of them. That's the second one. The other one is in Landell, so you don't need to kill Nephili Lou for the Stormhawk Axe. And it is a very, very good weapon. It basically has Stormcaller, but better, as it's Ash of War. Cool. Um, I was using it on my parallel run, and it is fucking devastating. Oh, Lion's Claw good here. I mean, Lion's Claw always good, but being able to... Well, I was going to say being able to one-shot those guys is good, but apparently an L1 does it as well. So, there's a Banish Knight coming up here. Um, th this, this isn't one... the problematic one, though. <laughs> no, there's there's a, there's a specific Banish Knight that has uh, two great swords, and um, it is a fucking nightmare. Like, to the point where there's certain just single enemies in this game that really makes you wonder, why wasn't this a boss? Like, just give it a <laughs> bit more health, or put it earlier in the game, and it would literally be like, wow, this is one of the harder bosses in the game. And it's just some fucking chud at the back of a castle somewhere. <laughs> so, a somber smith in stone 5 series of question marks? Like, who's that fucking useful to at this point in the game? I, I don't get it. You know, for all those people with plus four weapons in Castle Sol. Um, yeah. So we're just running. Frankly, past... if you made it here with a plus four weapon and you're doing fine, you don't you don't need that. Nah, you still don't not, need it. Nah. <laughs> so yeah, we're just running past those guys and then um, we're just dropping down and running straight up the stairs because that will take us to the Grace. This building's actually quite important because the item over there in front of the altar is another one of the weapons required for the Legendary Armaments trophy. It is the Eclipse Shotel. Actually, uh, you... sorry, uh, you should probably have just grabbed that grace immediately uh, as soon as you're presented here. So there's Eclipse Shotel, but you should probably have grabbed that grace first, then went and got that... Um, that stone sword key, and then you could just have warped back to the grace. Well, you couldn't have warped back to the grace because you're being chased. It didn't really matter. Never mind. But you should probably <laughs> have grabbed the grace in case you died. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Eclipse Shotel, by the way, deals holy damage um, when you use the Death's Flare Ash of War, and it also inflicts Death Light in PvE uh, and PvP, although in PvE it's fucking pointless. So we've jumped over onto this rooftop, and now we are. So, so there this is. thing can just teleport to you, by the way. But the reason why we jumped onto the rooftop is so we can fight it on this rooftop, rather than fight it on the little thin bit of uh, walkway where you normally fight it. This is literally the only advantage you can get over this fucking guy, and the fact that Lion's Claw will just like hit it through its attacks. Again, Lion's Claw pay paying dividends. It means that if you're able to take a like a, if you're able to trade the hit with him without dying, then you can just flatten him, heal up, and then just repeat that process. And that just becomes a pretty consistent theme for beating a lot of enemies in this game, actually. That was the absurd Banished Knight, by the way. That one yes. can just decide you're dead at any point. Now, strictly speaking, if you weren't using Lion's Claw, genuinely that thing would be considerably harder. Yeah, your award is a talisman we got the upgrade for about five parts ago. So. <laughs> yeah. so it's literally just not worth even doing, like, legitimately. Yeah, official stance of the guide, you don't need the Crimson Number Medallion plus one. You don't. Yeah, we, we've already showed you, 
like how to get it and you know what it is so that was three smith and stone sevens bafflingly you know immediately after they give you a smith and stone five that just seems very incorrect to me but go off And now we're going back to Church, Church of the Clips, which is why I was trying to kill the rats so I could, like, warp back, but they were... I don't know why killing the rats was so difficult in that room. Was, that was embarrassing, actually. <laughs> Looking over the footage. And now, I mean, we're getting close to 40 strength. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think at 40 strength, you would actually be better off with a fire infusion in general. Um, although for this area coming up, uh, fire infusion, not great. So, should probably mention, actually, in Castle Salt, the the uh, Banished Knights can drop the Helm, the Armor, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, they can drop an altered version of the Helm and the Armor. They can also drop the Banished Knight Halberd, uh, which we've already got anyway, which we get guaranteed. And then we can get the Banished Knight Great Shield and the Banished Knight Shield. Now, these guys here are called... Oh, fuck, I don't actually have this. Something like Tortured Albanoric or whatever. They can drop the fucking... Um, I can't remember what it's called. Like, Black Pudding Head or some shit. I mean, close enough. Black Dumpling. That, right. Black Dumpling Headpiece. They are so irritating as enemies. The other enemies are called Exiles, which are the same guys. So, it's not, so Smith and Stone 6, by the way. But the Exile enemies, which are the same guys we fought in uh, Stormvale... They can drop the hood, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can drop spears, torch poles, crescent moon axe, uh, the soldier's crossbow, uh, lord swarm bolts, bolts, smith and stones, stormhawk feathers, smoldering butterfly, mushrooms. Obviously, they'll drop the weapon that they're wielding like anything else. With that said, coming up to the boss, this is another one of the commander type bosses. Yes. Uh, this one is Commander Nile. And this is the one instance in the whole game where your bewitching branches really would come in handy. Yes. This Commander Nile, as soon as you enter the fight, does as you do and summons back up. And he summons two banished knights. So if you can run straight over to him as he's summoning his backup dancers, you can use a bewitching branch on either one of them. I would recommend the one with the dual great swords because, as we've described, they do a lot of fucking damage. And then it's you and one banished knight versus Nile and a second banished knight. And you can kill that second banished knight quite easily. But the thing is, is that at this point in the game, with the level that we're at, with the equipment that we've got, with Lion's Claw, with Blood Flame Blade you can see that it's actually not a huge deal anyway. If you're dealing enough, if you are where you're supposed to be in this game, you can kill those two banished knights and then Nile actually becomes, honestly, pretty straightforward. He's actually quite slow <laughs> overall. Yes, he can put a, he's got a, a very, a, a wide range on his attacks and they can deal decent enough damage, but strictly speaking, I mean, look, he's barely even tickling the mimic tier. But we do have other footage of using the Bewitching Branch. So we get the Veteran's Prosthesis for that. But now, we've got the Bewitching Branches that we bought from the Merchant that is before Hieta, the last bit of Hieta in, um, in Leonia. And there we go. Now that Banished Knight is fighting for us. Now, strictly speaking, I should have went straight into killing that other Banished Knight because um, uh, Niall just fucking immediately marked the one that I got on my side. Which is a bit annoying, uh, but strictly speaking, uh, that is one one very good use for the bewitching branch. So there we go. There's another bewitching branch. He's now on our side. We can now summon the mimic tier. Yeah, and it's effectively a bunch of free damage for you. I mean, it did cost a flask or two, I suppose. But like the Manish Knight's still going. He's still yeah. kicking Niles' ass. Like. It is a really, really valuable use of a bewitching branch. Because uh, they're a rare consumable. They are not easy to get. No, no, they're not easy to get. And uh, But but ultimately, our build is quite well geared into fighting uh, Nile, just generally speaking. Just because of the Mimic tier and four great stars build. It's, it really is so versatile that it does make bosses that were frankly people struggled with just a complete cakewalk. 
I mean, given that we have four great stars, it's less of the great stars build than more like the great constellation build. <laughs> like, yeah, I like that. Uh, also, something to mention, there was actually some Warhawks uh, earlier in this level, and they can drop the Stormhawk Feathers, uh, f Flight Pinions, but also the Warhawks Talon. Good and weapon, then... unique R2, infusible straight sword, skills well with decks. Yes, uh, I mean, it's, if you want to, uh, if you want to farm for that, you're better off farming for it in um, Storm Veil, admittedly, but that, that is what they drop. Mm. Uh, so now we are warping back to this grace, and now I think we're going to get the painting. I think I don't know. I mean, we surely must get the painting now, right? Yes, we do. Right, so <laughs> uh, we are heading back down this this road. That was uh, the Tibia Mariner was here, and then at the end of the road we fought the Death Rite Bird. Hopefully you recognise that. But uh, this, oh god, there's one of those skeletons. I don't even know what's summoning that one because the Tibia Mariner's dead. But um, yes, right here is where the painting guy shows up, and he gives us the uh, the Great Hood for all your pyramid head cosplay needs. Yes. And uh, now we are, I think let's just, I think we've got one more small thing to do, and then that is it for this part. And we are going to be doing the rise puzzle, quote unquote. This one's a bit of a pain in the ass. Alright, so stimulating bosses, I think that wakes you up from sleep, or at the very least lowers your sleep build up, because once, you've, once you're sleepy, you're, you're just going to fall asleep anyway. So, right about here, in front of this wall, so it, there, you can go straight up to the wall uh, with this invisible path. Oh, God, I hate this bit so much. But you can whip out your rainbow stones or your uh, rainbow stone arrows. Uh, or you can, in fact, use this weapon here, which can show you if there's a path in front of you or not. Slightly better tool for doing this would be um, Hawfrost Stomp. So, like we've been saying, using the dagger as a bit oof. If you just put Hawfrost Stomp on the dagger, when you Hawfrost Stomp, it will only leave the uh, little ice crystals on the floor where the path exists. Now, strictly speaking, that was just to show you that you can use that item. Um... You're probably better off using the rainbow stones, but you know how to use rainbow stones by this point anyway. So obviously if the rainbow stone falls, you can't go any further because there's no path. Uh, now in here is, uh, what are they called? This um, Those fucking flappy guys. Avianets. Avianets. They can drop the marionette soldier bird herm and the cuckoo glintstones. So a bunch of shite. I... <laughs> Uh, Although this I'm tower sure. is quite important, actually. Uh, yeah? Yeah, because your reward for this tower is the Founding Reign of Stars sorcery. Mm. Which, I believe, is the last of the legendary sorceries you would require for the trophy. So yeah, I guess you do need to do that. That is important for the trophy. So, heading back to the Bestial Sanctum, we've got two death route to give him. I don't know if this is the last death route or not. I think there might be one or two more. We will find out. But no, yeah, that's get... the last one. Cool. Garanx, Beast Claw, and um, Big Hammer. The ultimately... Beast Claw, Great Hammer. There we go. Thanks for that. But that is it for the first part of Mountain Tops of the Giants. And okay, there we go. That's Mountain Tops 1 done. Join us in part 38, where we're going to be doing Mountain Tops of the Giants part 2. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.